now that we have discussed the letter M, it's time to be introduced to the real alphabets. Remember, the modern alphabet come from ancient Egypt, directly and indirectly. But let's start with the direct ones. For example, the letter A comes from the word for Hathor in ancient Egypt. But it was taken by the Canaanites and converted into Aleph, meaning cow. Taken from the Egyptians who Hathor was the cow. Now, the way the ancient Egyptian script worked is that you would use a word and another word, and those two words would form a separate word. Like, for example, the word chem and t together make chemit. But the Canaanites came up with an idea that is different. These Canaanites came up with the idea of using only the first letter of the word. So they took the word Aleph and used the A in front of it. This is why the word Aleph or Alpha is still used today. And as you can see, the letter A is just an ox head turned upside down. Now for the letter B, which was Per in ancient Egyptian, and bait in Canaanite, the first letter B was used as the letter B, and this was still in Canaanite language. Believe it or not, this is where the letter B comes from. This is true for several other letters in the alphabet, and the Canaanites added some of their own that were not taken from ancient Egyptian. And moreover, we see that the Phoenicians would then take the Canaanite letters and finicize them for their own usage. And now you get the Phoenician alphabet. And from the Phoenicians, we move to the early Greek. And you can see the early Greek is starting to look like capital letters of today. And from the capital letters of today, you can see that Greek, ancient Greek, is giving us those letters as they came. And this goes all the way back to ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, which means that ancient Egypt birthed the script of ancient Greece. I could get into detail and talk about each single letter, but I think there's a YouTube channel that's already done it better. And it's the one that's on the screen. If you just go look it up and watch this exact episode, you will see how awesome it was for the conversion from ancient Egyptian to modern script. Any language that uses alphabets today, no matter what country it's from, started with Canaanites and ancient Egyptians. This presentation cements two things that a lot of people take for granted. One, when the Syrians, the Middle Easterners, choose whatever tribe you want, when they say that the ancient Egyptians were their foundation, as the Greeks wrote, that I wrote last time, that they said they got circumcision from the ancient Egyptians. And now you notice how they got their letters from ancient Egyptians. So when they started writing in this type of script, that they got that from the ancient Egyptians. And a lot of their history they got from the ancient Egyptians. And as I will show you, there's images that show their veneration for the ancient Egyptians. This shows you that Egypt is not just another ancient civilization. It is the civilization that was really venerated by people all around. And you don't find that anywhere else on earth. This is why some people can't have the ancient Egyptians being a native African race. Because that would 
topple everything. On the left, you have ancient Egyptian depiction of Canaanites. And of the right, you have a figure dressed as an ancient Egyptian. This artwork was created by Canaanites. And this is them looking at each other and giving an opinion on each other. And as you can see, the Egyptian is wearing a loincloth, whereas the Canaanites are dressed in these multiple colors. Somehow the ancient Egyptians were not inspired to pick up the colors of the Canaanites, but the Canaanites were inspired to pick up the literature of the Egyptians. Next, we have the Phoenicians, where the word Phoenix comes from. And as you can see, they depict an Egyptian man. And you can see he's Egyptian because of his hair and the stylization. He's wearing a loincloth and he's got a monkey on his shoulder and a leopard, I suppose, holding a goat. And this African man that you can see that he looks pure African has the Nubian wig on his head. And that wig, again... Notice how the similarities between this man and how the ancient Egyptians depict Nubians. This is how Phoenicians depict Egyptians. So you look at the alphabets that were tilted by the Phoenicians, taken from the Egyptians by the Canaanites, and then moved by the Phoenicians, and then later by the Greeks. But this is what the Phoenicians depicted the ancient Egyptians like. And remember, they are the ones where you find the phoenix. And it's kind of ironic that the sphinx appears multiple times in their art as if maybe the phoenix might have originated originally from the sphinx. Thus making the history of Egypt very deep indeed. But before we move on, let's look back at this image one more time of the Phoenician head of an Egyptian man and the Egyptian head side view of a Nubian. Don't they look like it's a side view of the same person? I promise you it's not the same person. I promise you it's not the same person. But don't they look like the side of you of the same exact person? My people, my African people, I promise you, we will win this fight. It is only a matter of time till they accept it. And even the Greeks who later took on the alphabets and changed them further, making them look closer to what we see today... When you see their depictions of native Egyptians, which keep in mind, there's only two depictions during the time of Ptolemy, which is what we're looking at. There's the depictions of the Ptolemaics, and then there's Ethiopian people. These Ethiopian people are the natives of Egypt. There is no third category. There's just these two being depicted. And we know that the Greeks didn't consider themselves native to Egypt. They made a fact of that. Their servants, they depict as black people and usually in a form of subjugation. As you can see, this man here seems to be fatigued. And he is clearly depicted as an Ethiopian with the hair as well. If we sit with our thoughts for a while and look at these three images, the first Greek, Greco-Roman, the second um, Phoenician, and the third ancient Egyptian depiction of a Nubian, ask yourself a question. Do you see any similarities between these three? Two depicting Egyptians and one depicting a Nubian. Or if you'd like, all three depicting Nubians, but then admitting that Nubians and Egyptians were one of the same. And by now, the Latin takes on this version of the alphabet. <laughs> 